Hi, welcome to the preview of Unit 1. We need to take a few minutes before we start Unit 1 and review some laws of exponents and really get good at these and go over the properties or the rules. Okay, we're going to talk about multiplying today and also raising to exponents, dealing with negative exponents, and then some dividing. So all that is wrapped up in here. So let me get started. Okay, we're going to start with something simple like 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 7th. Well, the rules or the laws of exponents say when we're multiplying like bases, and in this case the bases are 2, we don't change the base, so the base remains 2, but we add the exponents. So we're going to add 7 plus 5, so that's going to be 2 to the 12th. Okay, now notice I didn't multiply the bases together, I just kept the base of 2. So let's look at it in terms of a variable. We have x to the 4th times x to the negative 2nd. So now we're multiplying like bases, but this time we have a negative exponent. Well, you just do the same thing, you just, when you're multiplying, you add the exponents. So I'm going to take x to the 4th plus negative 2, and I'm going to add 4 and negative 2, and I get a positive 2, so that's just x squared. And that would be my answer. Now notice I didn't change the base, did I? So when you have like bases, you add exponents. If your bases are not alike, you can't combine the terms. Okay, now let's look at an exponent on top of a term. Okay, so let's look at 2 squared to the fifth. When, you when you're raising to an exponent, what do you do with these exponents? You, uh, the rule is you multiply them. So I'm going to take a to the second times the fifth, the two and the five, I'm going to multiply together, and I'm going to get a to the tenth. Now I could write it out and show you why, but this is just a review lesson, so I'm not going to go over all that detail just because we have a lot to cover. Okay, and then on this one we have five x to the fourth quantity squared. So I'm going to square this five x to the fourth. Okay, when you square that, you can't forget that you also need to square your coefficient. So I'm basically kind of going to kind of look, it's not really distributing, but that's sort of what I'm doing. I'm squaring all the terms inside here. So I'm going to take 5 squared and x to the fourth squared. Well, we, we just talked about up here, when you're multi, uh, raising to an exponent, you multiply those. So I'm going to multiply 4 and 2. So on this one, I'm going to get 25 x to the eighth. Okay, so the rule is whatever operation is going on, like raising to an exponent, your coefficient actually does get that operation, like you're going to square the 5. But with the exponents, you take what I consider a step lower, okay, because over here, if you're multiplying, what do you do with exponents? You add. When you're raising to an exponent, what do you do? You multiply. So it's kind of like always a step lower, okay? So there are a couple examples to get you started. Now let's look, look at some that are a little more involved. Okay, let's take some with some negatives and positives. So let's take 6 to the negative third all cubed. Okay, now what would we do with that negative exponent? Well, first of all, let's deal with that right there. Let's multiply our exponents. So we're going to get 6 to the negative ninth. Now, we can't write our exponents as negative exponents. We need to write them as positive exponents. Well, what that negative exponent indicates is it is on the bottom of our fraction. So I can move that 6 to the, to the ninth to the bottom of the fraction, and there's just going to be a 1 up top. So that is how you would rewrite 6 to the negative ninth. Okay, so now let's throw in a few more of those. What if we have 4 to the seventh over 4 to the third. Now we're actually looking at division this time, okay? So on multiplication we added exponents. So remember on division we subtract exponents. These two bases are alike, so all I have to do is subtract my exponent. So I'm going to take 4 to the 7 minus 3, and that's going to be 4 to the 4th, okay? Now notice I got a positive exponent on this one, therefore it would just be 4 to the 4th, or it, you know, if we needed to write it as a whole number, as a fraction, we could put a 1 under it. We know that that is a whole number though, okay? But let's look at one that may come out with a negative exponent, okay? What if we have 
um, x to the negative third over x to the second. Okay, well there are two ways to look at this one. I'm going to show you both. Since we're dividing, I subtract the exponents. So I can take x to the negative 3 minus a positive 2, which is x to the negative 5th. Okay, remember, we don't want to write it with a negative exponent, so I'll send it to the bottom, x to the positive 5th. Okay, and that would be the correct answer. The other way to think about it is this. Okay, you can think of this as two floors, an upstairs and a downstairs. If you have a negative exponent, it just means it's on the wrong floor. So I can take that x to the negative third and send it downstairs. Well, this x squared is positive, so I leave it where it is. So I'm going to bring this x cubed down. I get x cubed down here. Now it's positive, but I already had an x squared. So that means I have an x to the, multiplying like basis, add exponents, an x to the fifth. And whatever's on top, if there's nothing left, it's not zero, it is one. So you can get the answer that way, and notice these two answers are the same. So really, it's up to you deciding which way you want to do it.